Hello and welcome back to another incident report. In this video, we will be going over the Marshville, North Carolina train wreck. Items used in this video are from the National Transportation Safety Board as well as photos from the railpictures.net and other sources. On April 10th, 1984, at 9.30 a.m., a seaboard system train labeled FERHL derailed, causing 18 cars to jump the track, some of which included hazardous materials. Of all these cars, four that derailed were loaded with methanol. Two of these four cars were breached during the derailment, and the released methanol was ignited, causing a fire to erupt. It is estimated that 2,100 people were evacuated in a one-mile radius of the incident. The U.S. Highway 74 was closed, and the fire was allowed to burn until it had subsided at 10 p.m. on the day of the accident. There were no fatalities and only one injury during the evacuation. What was the lead up to this incident? To find this, we need to go back to about 2 a.m. of that morning. The following paragraph is from the NTSB. At 2 a.m. on April 10th, 1984, a Seaboard System Railroad freight train crew went on duty at Bostick Yard in Bostick, North Carolina. They took charge of an inbound freight train from which they removed 20 loaded coal cars. They coupled 18 freight cars in the yard and connected the air hoses. After receiving an air brake test, the 18 cars were added to the train and the test was performed to confirm that the brakes set and released on the rear car in the train. The train, designated FERHL, consisted of three diesel electric locomotive units, 87 cars, and one caboose. They departed eastbound with the engineer and the front brakeman at the control compartment of the lead locomotive unit and the conductor and rear brakeman and the caboose. After the train had traveled approximately 35 miles and arrived at Cherryville, North Carolina, they remained on the main track for over an hour. During that time of waiting, both brakemen walked along the train to do a visual inspection and noticed nothing out of the ordinary. They then resumed operation after the train they were waiting for had passed. Sometime later, they passed a wayside hotbox detector. A wayside hotbox detector is to detect defects of rail cars and equipment. This hotbox detector did not send any warning to the crew because it picked nothing up. At the next stop, Pinoca Yard, the train stopped to remove two cars. The engineer stated that they were braking heavily into the yard before reaching the destination. A freight car inspector on his way to work noticed smoke coming from one of the cars and notified the train crew via radio. The noted car was SAL45678, the 47th car from the locomotive. It was also noted that this car was filled with pulp wood. It was the yardmaster who contacted the train crew about this. Both front and back crews of the train understood and heard the messages clearly. The crew of the train went back out to check again and did not see anything coming from the specified car. They relayed the information to the yardmaster and continued on their way. The train then continued to Charlotte and Matthews and passed a hot box detector in the area of Matthews. The detector sent off an alarm this time, and the train crew received it via radio. The warning advised that there were 362 axles on the train and that the journal on the left side of the 157th axle from the rear of the train was overheated. The front brakemen used calculations to determine that it was the 47th car from the front of the train. After searching around and again not noticing anything unusual, the front brakeman assumed that the hotbox detector had given a false alarm because he was unable to find the hot journal. The crew continued once again on their way to Monroe, North Carolina, where the engineer and front brakeman set out 12 cars. The train then departed from Monroe with an added locomotive totaling four, one of which was not in operation. They were also pulling 73 cars and the one stated caboose. At 9.30 a.m. as the train entered Marshville, at about 35 miles an hour, over a turnout, they experienced an undesired emergency application of the train brakes. The train separated in two and the crew of the front looked back and saw that the train had derailed, 18 cars in total. It was the 35th through the 52nd cars and previous to the changes at Monroe would have been the 47th to the 64th. Of the 18 cars, 12 were destroyed, and 6 sustained damage, 
Three buildings and four automobiles were destroyed by the impact and fire. Also noted by others is that part of the Marshville Town Hall was burnt. About 850 feet of main track and 400 feet of auxiliary track and one turnout, as well as an automated grade crossing, were destroyed. The total cost of the damage was an estimated $1.383 million or roughly $4 million in 2023. The following is the findings from the NTSB report. 1. The train crew was qualified for the respective positions in accordance with the seaboard standard. 2. Smoke was observed coming from a journal on car SAL45678 on train FERHL as it approached Charlotte and this information was provided to the engineer. 3. In complete communication between crew members about the observation on car SAL45678 resulted in incomplete inspection of the train at Charlotte. 4. The hotbox detector in Matthews identified an overheated journal on car SAL45678. 5. The information provided by the hotbox detector at Matthews on the overheated journal was incorrectly used by the train crew, resulting in the initial failure to locate the overheated journal. 6. Failure of crew members to follow Seaboard's procedures for locating overheated journals following receipt of the hotbox detector alarm resulted in the overheated journal not being located by the crew. 7. The failure of the overheated journal 1.6 miles west of Marshville allowed the wheels on the trailing axle of car SAL45678 to derail. 8. 18 cars of train FERHL derailed in Marshville when the derailed wheels on the car SAL45678 encountered a turnout. 9. The unprotected bottom outlet nozzles on two tank cars containing methanol were broken off during the derailment, breaching the tank shells and resulting in the release of the contents of the tank. 10. The released methanol increased greatly to the hazards of public safety posed by the derailment. 11. Response to the emergency by the community was effective in minimizing the hazards to public safety because of the effective pre-planning and management of available resources. 12. Actions taken on the initiative of the train conductor supported effectively the actions of emergency response agency. 13. Seaboard's programs for training and monitoring of operating crews does not provide reasonable re assurance that crew members understand and comply with the, its operating rules. 14. Federal requirements for protecting external bottom outlets on stub sill tank cars are not adequate. 15. The Association of American Railroads has developed standards for increased protection of the bottom outlets, but its schedule for implementing this increased protection should be accelerated. 16. Improvised means are necessary for identifying in route the existence of overheated journals and for assisting crews in the positive location of a defective journals. The NTSB stated that the probable cause was the fault of the crew and actions were taken to ensure that this was a learned lesson for everyone involved and for the rest of the company. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.